Welcome to the Hermetic Astrology Podcast. I'm Gary Caton in Waynesville, North Carolina. You can find me on the web at dreamastrologer.com. And today is Thursday, August 15th. Last night we had a doozy of a full moon. I don't know if you got out to see it, but um, you know the Perseid meters have been flying about recently. I got out to see some of those the other night. It was really cool. Um, and then the full moon last night was conjunct a magical star known as Deneb al -Gedi. Now you see this appellation Deneb with multiple stars, Deneb meaning tail. So for instance, you have Deneb Kaitos, the tail of the whale. Deneb al -Gedi is the tail of the goat fish. And um, this is one of 15 stars that were identified by Hermes as Bohemian stars, magical stars. Deneb al -Gedi, for instance, was associated with um, wealth and protection. And it's really, in the wealth part of it's really interesting because uh, I woke up this morning and I had identified this, you know, way back in the beginning of the year when I did my... Uh, my article, you know, the most magical transits of uh, the summer for um, astrology.com. Um, I mentioned this full moon because last year I noticed that when you have these full and new moons conjunct these stars, well, that seems like a big deal. And so uh, I had already, you know, been looking forward to this. I woke up this morning, Jupiter Day, and I got uh, an email from my publisher and my first official royalty uh, payment had hit my account and I was like sweet Deneb al -Gedi, bring on the wealth you know um, and also Jupiter right because today's Jupiter's day publishing is a Jupiter activity so um, hopefully for you you felt also some uh, effects of the recent station of Jupiter if you want to see Jupiter in the sky I'm going to share my screen so that I can show you a sky map and uh, if you, it's pretty easy. I mean, you, you, you really can't miss it. If you want to see Jupiter in the sky right now, and this is true pretty much for any superior planet, meaning Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, um, that around the direct station, they will be culminating, that is, on the midheaven, which is in the south. So you just look south look up and boom you can't miss it jupiter is of course one of the brightest things in the sky at any time and right now super high and bright and then just below and to the right you'll see jupiter before it's even dark that's how bright jupiter is <clears throat> and then as it begins to get darker and some of the stars begin to come out below and to the right you'll see this star antares the heart of the scorpion this is the star that um, I did a thing for Astrology Hub last year. There was a full moon on Antares, <clears throat> excuse me, and we did a whole workshop on the fixed stars and whatnot because of that. And I ended up working with Antares the whole year and ended up doing uh, um, a uh, magical talisman when, when the sun, Mercury, Jupiter all lined up on Antares. I did a magical talisman, and within two days, I... <laughs> And that's near my midheaven. This star happens to be near my midheaven. Within two days, I got a call from my editor at astrology.com, whom I had met at UAC when we had the full moon on Antares. And I got all this work that I've been struggling to get out from under ever since. So um, when you're working with Jupiter, you can definitely be careful because you might get more of whatever you were after than you realized, right? But um, nonetheless, Jupiter is there for us, high and bright with Antares, and that gives a little bit of an oomph, of course. Um, here in the middle, you can see the, uh, if you're in, if you happen to be lucky enough to be in a place that's dark, you can see between Jupiter and Saturn is the galactic equator, AKA Milky Way, the river of stars that um, is, uh, us looking towards the center of our galaxy, right? So all those stars, the density of stars that is the disk of our of our gal uh, galactic plane that, that we're on the outside of, right? You've seen those shirts, you are here. Oh, so this is looking in, right? 
So Jupiter and Saturn are basically at the midpoint of the Milky Way, or the Milky Way is at the midpoint of Jupiter and Saturn. Which way does that work? I think Jupiter and Saturn are forming a midpoint with the galactic plane, yeah. Um, which happens to be for the first time in 26,000 years, boom, right on the Capricorn point, um, which is really intense. So, so there's a lot of stuff going on with Jupiter right now. Jupiter just stationed direct. And um, it's really interesting to me because, I mean, I definitely felt the energy shift when Jupiter stationed direct recently. I think it was like just on Sunday. And um, in a good way, right? And then, you know, today I have some positive developments. And it's funny because I noticed, you know, um, I'm not saying anything against anyone in particular, and I'm certainly not going to name names, but you know, I noticed some people whom I respect greatly for their knowledge of the old texts, you know, saying, oh, it's not quite time for Jupiter magic yet because, you know, Jupiter is just still really slow. And in the old text, they talk about it being like a, um, a person who's been sick and they, you know, they're getting better. They're out of bed, but they're still weak and feeble and not really able to do a whole lot. And I thought, man, that's not the way I have experienced stationary planets at all. Stationary planets are like, boom, like powerful. And, uh, you know, I wrote when I was writing for, uh, with my buddy Eric Francis at Planet Waves. I, I did some writing with him. Oh, geez, I guess it's been about eight years back. Um, I dug up the article where I was talking about, the, you know, Jupiter's stations. Um, and, you know, the point I made then, and I still believe, is that when planets are stationary, they are more like fixed stars. They're more, that is, eternal rather than ephemeral, right? Because you get this book, you know, this is how I learned astrology. I mean, a lot of people nowadays... They don't, you talk about an ephemeris, they don't even know what that is. But this is how I learned astrology. And you can see this bad boy is all tore up. <laughs> it's all dog-eared and stuff. Because, um, you know, I went through this thing page after page after page, day after day after day when I first started learning astrology. And one thing you'll notice is that for Jupiter, there's only two days out of the whole year where it's going to have a letter next to the ephemeral position that changes day by day by day. It's going to have an R next to one day, and it's going to have a D next to another day. Two out of 365. So right away, those days stand out, right? And, um, you know, that. so to me, when these planets are still, they are more like fixed stars. They're more eternal than ephemeral, and they pack a punch. So to me, I think it's time to get the Jupiter magic on. I mean, my, my, I mean, I, like I said, I respect people who know all about the old books and all that stuff. And I think those old books are filled with a lot of great stuff that we can learn from and should learn and know. But sometimes they just don't match up with my life experience at all. And this is one of them. Um, so I'm ready to get some Jupiter magic on. And I sent out a um, special report to my members uh, last week or so ago about something really fascinating that's happening. Now, you know, as I said, at sunset or really at dusk, Jupiter's gonna be right overhead. But Jupiter today and for the next, for four weeks in a row, starting today, Jupiter will rise on Thursday in, at the time of the Jupiter hour. So Jupiter is in its own sign of Sagittarius, which is great. Jupiter's rising, which planets are always more powerful when they're rising. Jupiter, it's a Jupiter day and Jupiter hour. Those four things combined right there, that's the first four things you look for in a magical recipe. Bing, bang, boom, it's time to get Jupiter magic on. Four weeks in a row, it's gonna be like that. So, um, like I said, to me, I'm ready to get it on. I, this, this looks like a really cool opportunity. Um, today, Jupiter doesn't quite make it to the, all the way to the ascendant. It doesn't quite rise before Jupiter hour is up. So, you know, I recommended for today that it's just a petition. You just, you know, talk to Jupiter, ask for his help, tell him what kind of magic you're looking for in your life. And, and please, bright father, you know, 
Dius Pater, you know, bright father. That's the where Juice Pater, Jupiter, Zupiter, right? That's where, um, you know, please, bright father, um, may I have, you know, you could read the Homeric hymn or the Orphic hymn to Jupiter. Give him praise, give him offerings, you know, like, you know, and uh, so, so please, great one, can can I have your help, right? It's like, the way that I talk about it in the report is um, it's like uh, uh, going to the parent of somebody that you are interested in. You're pretty sure they're interested in you and you go to the parents and you say, may I have your permission to court your son or your daughter, right? It's a formality because you two are going to do what you're going to do anyway, right? But um it's in a very important formality because if you don't have permission then things get complicated way better to have the permission you know what i'm saying so um you know i give my people so this is the chart for that time you can see jupiter here is not quite to the um to the ascendant before the jupiter hour is up but nonetheless, like I said, you can sing or speak the Orphic hymn to Jupiter, give him praises, ask him for his help and say, hey, boss, the next few weeks, I would really like to work some of your magic to bring your energy down here to Earth. And, and can you help me? Right. Um, and then throughout the report, I go on to um, work through those charts and show you know, the pluses and the minuses for each one and help people make a decision based on, hey, if your chart has this, that, or the other at these degrees, this one may not be for you. If you've got this, that, or the other going on, green light, go for it, so on and so forth, right? Um, so that, that 16 page report is um, exclusively available to my members. If you wanna get involved, it's not too late. Like I said, today is just the introduction, so um you know you can still get in on the magic act part of it um go to my page dreamastrologer.com there's the special offers page where you can pick three different options to sign up to be a member um on the lowest option you get these reports every month next month i'm going to be doing a venus magic venus is going to be in libra visible as evening star it's time to get venus magic on next month um so we'll have a big, I'm already working on that. I was working on that yesterday as Venus was in the heart of the sun, for instance. Um, so for just 10 bucks a month, you can get these offerings as they come out every month. Sometimes I do lecture recordings, other things. If you want to add, go to the next level for 15 bucks, you can um, also get my lowest consult rates so that, you know, uh, for the average Joe or Jane coming off the street, the first time they talk to me, it costs 175 bucks to do their chart because I got to go through all the work of drawing it up. I spend an hour or more learning, the, you know, looking at the chart, dissecting it, learning about it before I even talk to them, right? Um, but if you want to sign up as a member, you get a serious discount on that. Right now, it's just a dollar a minute. With, so, that same, if you want to spend 75 minutes, that same consult could be like 75 bucks instead of 175, right? So if you get, really, if you get more than a couple consults with your astrologer per year, that's a great deal because it, it works out in your favor, even though you have the monthly payments. In the end, you, you're getting a great deal. Um, and then if you really want to go all out, all these reports that I've been doing for the last 10 years, lecture recordings, gigabytes of stuff is in my archives and uh, if you go to the next level you get instant access to the entire archives and you can just <laughs> dive in the deep end of um, of you know basically like 10 years of professional astrology experience um, so those are all the ways that you can get involved all right so we know where to find Jupiter we know um, now, so what, what can, why would I need Jupiter magic in my life? What is Jupiter going to give me? You know, well, Jupiter basically is the planet of the guru, of the teacher, of the philosopher. So, um, publishing, travel, all these kinds of things. So if you're trying to get anything done regarding foreign cultures, um, uh, higher learning, philosophy, 
um, travel, it just expansion of any kind. Because you see, the other thing that I go through in the report is I go through these uh, magical sigils and the Kamea or magic square of Jupiter and talk about where they come from and why they are useful as magical tools. Because if you look up, like for instance, you know, there's, there's museums out there who have like um, from the Renaissance area era, you know, little metal discs that people would hang around their neck, Jupiter talismans. And what did it look like? It was basically a combination of one or more of these symbols that I'm showing you here scratched onto a piece of metal and then hung around the neck. Why these symbols? What, what the heck are these things and, and why are they magical? Well, it's a little bit of a story, but um, in, the, in the hermetic tradition, the earth and the four elements exist basically at the center of the universe, right? It's a geocentric system. So you have the earth and the four elements. And then above that, you have the moon and then Mercury, Venus, Sun, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, the planetary spheres, right, that are um, like in concentric circles around the Earth. And then above that, you have the fixed stars of the zodiac. And then above that, you have um, the star of what's called the prime mover. Some people call it the great architect. Um, uh, basically, it's like the de demiurge is another thing that people call it. And then above that, in these drawings where you see these, these things, you know, it, it'll say habiculeum dei in Latin, for instance. What, what's that? Dwelling place of God, the home of God, essentially. So there you have it. God in his heaven. You'll hear people say that God in his heaven, as if there were other heavens, right? And in fact, in the Bible, when you read it, it says the angels say glory to God in the highest. In a Lutheran type reading, which is like, if you read that for yourself based on your own experience and you're an astrologer, you're saying, oh, God in the highest heaven. God's up there in the highest heaven. Then you have the prime mover, right? So the prime mover is in the first sphere below God. Then you have the fixed stars. Then you have Saturn. Then comes Jupiter. So four, therefore, is a magical number for Jupiter and you've got a four-sided Kamea or magical square where you know how those work. I'm sure you've heard of these. The numbers all add up to the same any way you go and so forth, right? And then if you assign the Hebrew letters to these squares and you add up the name of the angel associated with Jupiter and so forth, you get these shapes by following the letters, right? So these sigils uh, have to do with the what's called the well the seal is actually just the um, it's a way where you can cover all the numbers and so the so between the cross and the circle all of the numbers in the magical square are covered right and so that's basically the seal which you see on the top right and then the, the sigil below which is the intelligence of Jupiter is the name of the angel and then um, these numbers correspond to uh, Hebrew letters in Hebrew, and then you track the, the letters and you make the sigil, right? So, so a lot of people say, are these symbols really magical, or is it just because people have been using them for so long that they have, don't know, don't care, they just know they work, <laughs> okay? They definitely work, and these are the tools that we can use when we want to do Jupiter magic. So, yeah, if you're looking to, and, and oh, and by the way, why is Jupiter expansion? Well, two things. Look at the glyph for Jupiter. Here's the cross of matter, and then here's the crescent of soul above the cross of matter. So the soul is striving to rise above the material limitations, material restrictions of material reality, right? The other reason is because as we go through these spheres, the first sphere represents a point. The second sphere represents two points and a line. The third sphere of Saturn represents a plane, right? And then when you get to the fourth dimension with, with Jupiter, you get a cube. So you get something with some interior space. This, this thing has been expanded 
to hold something, right? So the idea of Jupiter being expansive also comes from that. So anything that you want to expand, you want to grow, you want to move forward with, um, and, they, and again, these are usually associated with things like philosophy, higher learning, long distance travel, especially foreign cultures, um, so on, and teachers, teachings, publishing, for instance, getting right, because uh, even, even like, for instance, podcasting nowadays, because if you look at the map that my um, hosting company gives me, there's places all over the world where people are listening to this podcast. It's amazing, you know? Um, so even though you might think of podcasting as a mercurial thing, you know, it's communication day to day, what's going on in the sky right now. At the same time, it's very much a Jupiter thing. Um, so all of these sorts of things, when we, when we know what's up and we time the, uh, and we time where Jupiter is in a sign, right? It's rising in its day and hour. We can then activate the energy of Jupiter and draw it into our lives for specific purposes and stuff. Um, I should say we can um, we can work with it. We can ask for it to come into our lives, right? Because nobody's controlled Jupiter. Jupiter, as a matter of fact, if you're if you're not walking your talk. Um, you know, Jupiter is God of thunder and lightning, right? So you got to watch out. Like if you're, if you're not walking your talk and you're, you know, off base on something and you're just trying to like, you know, expand something that is not necessarily, um, on a solid foundation somehow, you might get one of them lightning bolts instead of the growth. So, um, you know, word to the wise right there. Um, but yeah, this is, to me, this station is a wonderful opportunity. Let those who want to wait because some dusty old book says wait, let them wait. <laughs> Get a head start. That's the way I see it. Um, so yeah, if you want to just, you know, off the cuff, um, go for it on your own. Say, I don't know about these magical sigils and stuff. Is there something I can do? I mean, you can work with the stone, like Jupiter's stones or topaz, for instance. And you can get some, you know, just regular run-of-the-mill small, like I think they call them tumbles, you know, the little small pieces of toe. You can get those for at a working person's budget. Let me just put it to you that way because that's what I am, and I got some of them recently. Uh, you can get some sage Sage is a pretty typical, um, you know, countertop herb, right, that you use for cooking. Sage is associated with Jupiter. So you got topaz, you got sage, um, and you can, um, you know, you've got the glyph of Jupiter. Everybody, most people who are interested in astrology knows that one. Um, and you can combine these things. You can do a little prayer. As I said, you can um, read the Orphic Hymn to Jupiter. You can do a little prayer. Um, you know, with, it's interesting because with Jupiter, Jupiter is so big and expansive. If you ask for something open-ended, Jupiter, give me, um, you know, uh, more work, <laughs> for instance, like I did last, uh, which basically what I was saying when I did a talisman on my midheaven, right? Give me some work guys. <laughs> Whoops. So you might want to be a little more specific about what you want when you're talking with Jupiter because, you know, um, you might get more than you can actually handle out of the thing, right? So invoke the opposite sign from Sagittarius, which is Gemini, you know, Mercury, the more specific stuff. When you hold both of those polarities, then you're going to be better off than if you're just holding one of them because, you know, then that's basically unbalanced. Um, but yeah, I think if you're coming at it from a place of a pure heart and, uh, also, um, like I said, giving offerings to Jupiter, this, this doesn't just mean like, um, you know, um, you could, for instance, clean out your bookshelf. If you've got any books that you're not using, give them away to, right. Um, 
you can share, you know, you can just be generous, share the bounty of your life with others who may not have as much. These sorts of things are a way to um, propitiate Jupiter and to say, hey, you know what? I want to be like you. I want to be generous. Jupiter is considered to be generous and protective, right? And literally, there's all Jupiter is such a huge planet with such a massive gravity that there's constantly the Earth would be bombarded to an extent where life would be impossible if it weren't for this massive dude sucking in all that debris, right? That we still get pounded from time to time, but not so much that you and I can't um, do this thing we call the Earth walk. Um, but you know, do like Jupiter does. Be generous. Be have a good time, show others a good time. Um, and uh, like I said, you can use the herbs and the stones of Jupiter, the sigils and whatever, and you can mix and match. You don't have to, it's not, as long as you're reverent, and like I said, you're coming from a place of pure heart and not like a selfish, greedy motive or anything like that. I think, you know, with the greater benefic, it really is all good as far as that goes. Like I said, um, you just want to make sure you're on a good foundation and walk in your talk. Um, purification, as I go through in the report, I was, you know, recommending um, last Thursday was, um, or a couple Thursdays ago was Lamas or Luganasa, right? Uh, you know, the, the pagan holiday that is at, at the cross quarter. And I was recommending to my folks, hey, you know, do a purification. Um, you know, get yourself right, because what do you do when you go to church? You get yourself cleaned up, put on your good clothes, you know, all this stuff. That purification is the first step in any ritual of transformation. So before, you know, clean the house, clean out the detritus, make sure you got all your affairs in order before you go trying to do um, some magic. And generally speaking, with Jupiter, things will, things will turn out all right. Um you know, the, the, the classic thinking is if you, in your natal chart, if you have Jupiter and Gemini or Virgo, right, because those are like the signs opposite its rulership. Now, they don't have that in Vedic astrology. They don't have, they don't have the concept of debility. So, you know, that's interesting. Um, they do, however, observe uh, Jupiter in Capricorn being hard time because that's opposite its exaltation in um in cancer um but yeah if, so if you have jupiter in gemini uh virgo or capricorn eh, you know it might be um a little more difficult if you have squares or oppositions to jupiter particularly from the malefics in your chart i go through a whole list of stuff you know if this you know <laughs> you might want to check with your own guides you know do a tarot spread or whatever before you proceed um, but you know, generally speaking, if, um, if you've got like sextiles or trines to Jupiter in your chart and it's not in any of its stabilities or anything, you can pretty much go ahead at this time and, uh, get your Jupiter juju on. <laughs> it feels great to have some good news for folks for a change. It's been, it feels like it's been a hard kind of like melancholy year, you know, with all this weird stuff in the news and Oh, Saturn conjunct South no conjunct Pluto. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Father Time, you know, but yeah, please get off the toilet. Um, <laughs> friend of mine, you know, because the South Node's shaped like this, you know, um, a friend of a friend of mine, she calls it the urinal. <laughs> it is the tail of the dragon, you know, so that's been a little bit tough. It feels like Jupiter turning direct and maybe is a, a little bit of a reprieve from that. And it won't be too long before Jupiter turns direct and then finally gets away from K2. And I think at that point we can definitely breathe a really big sigh of relief. But for now, it's nice to have a little Jupiter action going on. Um, if you're interested in the report, check me out online and, and think about becoming a member. We're going to be doing some Venus magic next month. The month after that, I'm going to have recordings from my trip out. I'm going to be out in California. I'm going to be talking for San Francisco Astrological Society. Let me give you all the dates for that. Um, 
for any of my peeps out there on the West Coast. I'm going to be talking for San Francisco Astrological Society on Thursday, September 26th. I'm going to be talking about the Mercury Elemental Year. I'm going to be giving a workshop on fixed star magic for the San Francisco NCGR on the 28th. And then on the 29th, I'll be giving a uh, workshop on planetary magic for NCGR Sacramento. And um, of course, my, my peeps, my members get first access to those recordings. Um, so there's all kinds of good stuff coming up around the corner. Um, we've got a, a private secret Facebook group that you can be a part of if you want to be a member and everything. So check that out. Um, and in the meantime, you know, yeah, just get your Jupiter magic on. And uh, if you feel, by the way, if you want to do propitiate Jupiter and be generous, you can go to iTunes or the Facebook page for Hermetic Astrology Podcast, Facebook slash hermetic.astrology. Leave a review. Tell other people about your experience of the show and, and uh, let them know uh, what, you know, what feelings and experiences it's brought up for you. It's amazing to me so many times and not necessarily even shows up in the reviews, but people send me private messages about um, where they had a loved one passing or something during the retrograde. And that's something I said, you know, help them through that time and, and stuff. And it's just like, it's just really an honor, a really deep honor to do what I do. And it's always fantastic to hear back from people about their experience. Um, uh, to know, you know, what I'm doing right. So, uh, uh, you know, you can propitiate Jupiter through that with a little bit of generosity there if you want to, to get your Jupiter magic off on the right step. All right. So I guess that's it for this time. Until next time, uh, bright blessings of the bright father. All right. See you next time. Bye for now.